How many of you guys have invested in I mean, he did a good job on the rap. A couple of you guys. Okay. So basically what it did is a speed jigging is a technique that requires, I hate to say this, but a lot of coordination and a lot of muscle memory. Because the way it works is on the downstroke, drop your jig down, on the wind up, as you're lifting your rod up, you're winding a full turn. So it's, it's a lot of upper body strength, it's a lot of speed, a lot of coordination. So tonight we're gonna to talk about a little bit about speed jigging, but I wanna talk about just jig fishing in general for bluefin. Most of you guys, when you fish the rail rods on the jigs, I see guys just dropping it straight down, winding it up, dropping it down, winding it up. Well, the problem with that is you're, you're in the strike zone for such a short period of time that you're gonna be working really hard for not very many bites. So the trick with that is pay attention to what the skipper's telling you. Two things you gotta remember is eyes in your line yeah. and ears for the skipper what he's telling you. It's so important nowadays with the sonars and everything else, the skippers will constantly keep you updated where the fish are coming through, what depth the fish are coming through. And if guys would pay attention to that, it'd be super, super devastating on those fish. Two things you really wanna do if you're gonna attempt this one, is make sure your line's marked on your reels. Ray, the way Ray does it is every 50 feet. Every 50 feet. 50 feet. Mm -hmm. um, the stuff that I use is already pre-marked. It's marked every 25 feet. So it's kind of nice, so you can kind of keep track of it. So when you're rail fishing these things on a rail rod, listen to the skipper says, skipper says 150 feet, drop down to 150 feet. Instead of winding up right away, you want to fish it almost like you're fishing rock fish. Put it in here, pop that rod up as high as you can, drop your rod tip, let the slack line your reel and your line go, and just let the jig flutter on the way down. Do it two or three times, don't get bent, wind it up 10 full turns, do the same project over again. Three, maybe four up and down sweeps, wind it up 10 feet. So each time you wind up 10 turns, it's about 30, 40 feet. So you're covering 100 foot of water column. Each time you're doing that boinking, you're, you're causing the jig to flutter in the strike zone where the fish are coming through. So your chances of getting bits a lot better than sitting there yo-yo fishing like you're fishing for yellowtail where you're just grinding it straight up. But the thing is you gotta pay attention to listen to what the skipper's saying. The skipper's saying, fish at 200 feet, two minutes later he says the fish is at 300 feet. You gotta pay attention to what he's saying and try to keep track of where you are on your, on your line, how deep you are. A lot of people have a tendency to think of these are 200 pound fish, you're 150 pound fish, I mean heavy, heavy line. You really don't need that heavy. The thinner the spectra you have, the less angle you're gonna have on your jigs. It's so important to have your jigs straight up and down instead of an angle. Don't worry about fishing lighter spectra. 80 pound, 65 pound, 100 pound. I wouldn't go much more than 100 pound. 100 pound starts getting, I mean, if you're fishing really big, big jigs, it's okay, but anything smaller, you might want to fish like 80 pound. If you have a lot less, lot less resistance in the water, your jigs can cut down a lot faster. They'll get more straight up and down. You're not gonna have a belly in your line, so you'd be more accurate in the depth where the fish are at. The other thing is you want to run a long top shot. You know, a lot of guys will run three, four feet. You really want to run 25 feet, 30 feet top shot. You need a little bit of that stretch. You also need that, that heavier top shot for abrasion if you, you do get a good fish and he wraps around your line and stuff like that. So run a heavy top shot. On my light outfit, I run 65 pound braid. And this is to 80 pound top shot. I run 25 feet to 80 pound, and I run 65. This is my light rod. This is my daytime jigging rod. This is for fishing like 200 grams or less. At nighttime, I go to the heavier outfit. I run a 100 pound braid to uh, 130 pound top shot. 130 mono. Mono, okay. yeah, not fluorocarbon, mono. You want the stretch, you don't want the fluoro. Now, however, on your jig itself, for a bike guard, you want to run heavy fluorocarbon on a bike guard. But you don't want to run it real long. Some guys want to run like five, six feet, and you really don't need that much. All you need is about two to three feet. Just, just in case the fish swallows your jig and you have something against the teeth. Uh, my recommendation, give yourself a good two-speed. Uh, if you have the money, buy the Torx, buy Talica, whatever your preference is, Daiwa. Um, if you don't have the money, the Fathom is a really good reel for the money. It's big, it takes a lot of line, it's got two-speed. The only thing you might want to do to it after you buy one of these reels is get an aftermarket handle. Uh, for two reasons. One, these handles are super thin. So I've seen these things bend. The aftermarket handles are a little bit thicker and they're a little bit longer. That longer sweep is going to help you a little bit. 
everywhere else in the world, unlike the U.S., we don't go by they don't they don't go by pound test. They go by PE. So PE is just for polyethylene. And when they have a number, it's relating to the diameter of the line. So 65 pound test should be right around PE five. Now a lot of guys wonder, you know, these rods are so small, so light. You know, how hard can you pull on these things? This rod, max power. So maximum power at 60 degree rod angle is 55 kilos. So it's 110 pounds of pulling power on this rod. Okay, but the action is really slow. So being that's a slow action rod, it's not designed to be put on the rail. If you put it on the rail, you're basically taking half of your power your rod and throwing it out the window. The rod's designed to bend all the way through to the butt. So the whole power is in the back half of the rod. It doesn't matter if you're rail rod fishing it or if you're speed jig rod fishing it. Set your drag between 19 to 20 pounds to strike. Okay. That way, if you do hook a big fish at the get-go, you're not gonna lose your rod out of your hands. I've seen five rods, five jigging outfits get ripped out of his hands because they're listening to these guys online saying, you gotta fish 35 pounds to drag and strike and everything else like that. And the guy does it, and he goes out there, he, he's jigging, he's jigging, he's jigging, he gets bit, also he's and the guy just sits there and looks at his rod, just moves the tail and away from the boat, and the guy's like, so the other thing, since we're on that topic about hooking fish, most guys who are fishing tuna traditionally are used to winding on a fish, not setting the hook. Oh, they tell you, do not set the hook once you get bit. Let the fish take it themselves. It's the absolute worst thing you can do on a jig. When you get bit and that fish starts taking drag, I want you to grab a hold of your spool on your reel and lean into it and just give it three or four good and hard swings on it. You want to drive that hook. Well, a lot of times you, you see guys that come up with jigs and they lost a fish and the hook is open. The reason why the hook gets open is because the fish gets stuck right above the barb on a fish's hard point on his jaw somewhere. If you don't drive that hook point through to sit the bend of the hook, I don't care how heavy the hook is, you can camper it open. If you give it three or four good hard swings, it's gonna push it all the way past the bar and into the bend of the hook, and you're gonna have a problem with landing the fish. When the guys watch me fish, and I'm sitting there, I get bit, and I'm just swinging three or four or five times, and it starts taking drag pretty hard, and I'll give it a couple more good pumps sometimes. The guy's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm gonna lose that fish. I wanna lose him right now where I'm still in the strike zone. Yeah. So I can still work my jig and get bit. I don't wanna fight him for an hour and then lose him. Right when they grab it, right when you feel that, that thump, he might not have the jig in his mouth completely. So you can just pull it right out of his mouth. Wait until your, your drag starts coming off your reel. When the fish is taking line, that means he's got the jig in there somewhere. He's got the hooks already buried partially in them. That's when you want to give it a really good hard hit. But like I said, you want to make sure you grab the spool. I like the clod, you know, I like literally just grab onto the spool and just give it a couple good hard hits. You can swing to the side, whatever comfortable for you. Some guys do it this way. I like to swing sideways. And just really drive that hook into them. And stop the rail. Exactly. There is no right or wrong answer to how many hooks you put on a jig. It's personal preference. A lot of guys are putting a, what they're doing is they're hoping they hook it on the top. And on the bottom, what happens, that hook on the bottom, it'll hang the, the, the fish also. And what it does, it keeps it that jig from flopping around, around and, 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 and shaking loose. loose. Okay. So, so this is my, yeah. this is the way I rig my jigs right here. I run a single assist on top, and I run a double on the bottom, a short double on the bottom. And you notice my short doubles have really light wire hooks, and guys always look at me like, you know, is that gonna hold the fish? Every single one of my fish that's taken the bottom hook has had both hooks pinned through the mouth. Like this. Yeah, a lot more guys are starting to do this rig now down in San Diego. They're starting to figure us out. In Japan, this is all they use. It's like this single double uh, for tuna fishing. Most speed chicken hooks are shorter, not the long. A lot of the systems you find in the store right now are super long because they're meant for slow. But speed jigging hooks are definitely a lot shorter. So if you do want a double, what you want to make sure is, is that your hooks never cross. You know, a lot of guys will run these hooks and they'll actually come across a lot from each other. You know, you don't want that. You guys see guys nighttime jigging. Most guys aren't pumping and winding real fast at night. They're, they're working a lot slower. You don't really need to burn it that fast at night. That's why I say if you use the blinking technique, it's super effective at night. Just like you're bouncing a rock on bar, the rock fish in the bottom, except you're not in the bottom. That's the same concept. But you don't want to tight line it down. You want to whip it up real quick and you want to slack it down. 
That slack line allows the jig, if you tight line the jig down, there's resistance and the jig wants to fall straight. If you slack it off right away, the jig will do its thing, it'll camber over, it'll either rock, shimmy, flutter, do what it's designed to do. If you were to tight line it down, you're putting resistance on there and you're keeping pressure on the nose, it doesn't let the tail slide out. Can you talk about what differentiates a speed jig from a slow jig and choosing jigs like what? Okay, good question. So a speed jig is generally weighted towards the back end of the rod, of the jig, the bottom end of the jig. Easiest way to tell, take the middle of the jig, put it on your finger, and see which way it's heavier. If it's heavier on the back side, that's a speed jig. When you balance it and it sits on your finger without flopping either way, just kind of sits there, that's a slow jig. The slow jig has a lot more flutter on the drop, where the speed jig is designed to go down cover distance as quick as possible. So if you're fishing heavy current, daytime, definitely speed. If you're fishing at night, the flip sliders are a lot better because they are more center weighted. They're gonna have a lot more action on the fall. So if you're sitting there blinking it, it's gonna, it's gonna pull up, it's gonna swim up, and it's gonna do big sweeping rolls on the, on the way down. A thousand dollar question. Eating 16 ounce. It's a torpedo has with it. Absolutely. <laughs> Does color matter? Not really. Why do we have so many colors? Because people like it. <laughs> and then last year I changed it to from glow stripes to glow dots because it was so much glow, the fish there was so much glow jigs out that the fish were getting kind of leery about it. So we started going with the glow dots. And now everybody's like, oh glow stripes are no good. You have to have glow dots. <laughs> <laughs> and the funny thing is, this jig right here. We call it cotton candy. It's all glow. And everybody wants to fish it at night. And it's the funniest thing because I this is my number one color fishing in the daytime. You know, everybody wants to fish the all glow at night. It's like, and they always watch me fish this in the daytime. Like, why are you fishing that in the daytime? Well, 300 feet, there's still light down there, but there's not a lot of it's light, but it's not visible light that we see. It's a lot darker, a lot dimmer. And these glow paints reflect UV a lot better than regular paint does. So it has a lot more UV flash to it. So it definitely stands out a lot more. At night, I wouldn't use all glow. I mean, minimal glow is fine. Ray did real good on his last trip with a uh, red and gold. Sriracha. Sriracha. The glow dots, they call it, they make them the Sriracha jig. That is three for three on the rich one. Sriracha color, 270 gram with two hooks on top, one on the bottom. Well, this jig has landed officially five bluefin tonight. And uh, I think it's retired. Oh. It's funny because Last year I could not give away that jig. That's when like, oh no, that that's not all red with the glow. That's now not all I, red with the glow. Now I'm getting 10 plus DMs a day asking where you can get it. I know. People ask for it in here like crazy already. Daytime, yeah, colors, you know, <laughs> colors do make a difference in daytime. It's pretty flashy and clear water. Off color days, darker days, use more like whites and yellows, something that has a little more reflection. Bright sunny day, something with more chrome in it. You want one rod that does everything, excuse me, which I'm not super thrilled about this, but it's this right here. 609, you can fish up to 600 grams on it. 200 grams to 600 grams. It fishes 400, 500 grams, probably the, the easiest to fish. If you're speed jigging with it, if you're doing the plonking with it, it doesn't really matter what size you want to fish. Uh, a pin fathom. So just to recap on the reel, any narrow, two speed of your choice. Absolutely. It doesn't have to be this. And, and, and I'll tell you what, guys will give you, some of the, the, those San Diego boys will give you a lot of, especially the ones that are really into the jigging, mm -hmm. will give you a lot of grief about fishing two speeds and everything else like that. Japan is starting to fish two speeds. Those 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 thousand dollar jigging master reels are, that they're so hopped up about, jigging master is making it two speed for a reason. People are starting to realize two speeds are so much easier to fish.